All right, good evening. We want to thank you for tuning in with us this evening, and we hope that you've had a, a good week this week, and we thank the Lord for it. Thank God for the pretty weather. Thank God for the sunshine that we're seeing out there and through the windows here as we're uh, here at the church this evening. But, um, but we thank the Lord for what he did for us this past week um, here at the church, and thank God for his presence, and uh, thank God for his power. And we want to continue in uh, in the book of Ephesians. We said this past Sunday, if you were here or maybe you turned, tuned into the video, we said that we'd be maybe spending uh, maybe several services here in the book of Ephesians. And I hope that it's been a blessing to you. Uh, I want you to, uh, while, while I'm uh, uh, going through a few things, I want you to be sure to get your Bibles and have them open. Tonight, what we're going to do most, mostly is just read the scripture. Uh, I'm going to make just a very few uh, comments about what we read, and um, and then we'll let you go this evening. But I hope and pray there'll be a blessing to you. There's nothing that will affect you, and will speak to you like God's word itself. And so you don't uh, you don't need any kind of great uh, uh, exposition of it, even though it is good to dig into it. But a lot of times we just need to read it. Uh, we need to heed to it and understand it and live it amen and so we thank you for that so while we're making just a very few announcements um, um, be sure to get your bibles and give you time to get turned over to the book of ephesians we're going to begin reading in chapter number four while you're turning there let me say this i talked to brother gary dancy uh, this week uh, please continue to keep him and sister brenda in your prayers um, he said he's still having a lot of trouble with the pain and um, just uh, very weak. And so uh, we love Brother Gary and Sister Brenda. And so be sure to pray for him uh, when you pray uh, tonight and then also this week. Let's remember the ones that were mentioned here uh, Sunday morning. Uh, let's remember the ones on our prayer list a lot um, and stand in need of salvation. Let's remember the ones here in our church that need to be saved. Let's remember our community members and friends and family that need to be saved. Uh, most of all and so we do have a lot to pray for and uh, we want to begin by going to the Lord in prayer this evening and we try not to take up much of your time uh, this evening but just kind of give you a, a few thoughts uh, looking back into this book of Ephesians okay so let's begin with prayer and uh, then we'll get started our Heavenly Father Lord we thank you God for the day and all that you've done for us we thank you Lord for your grace Lord we thank you Lord for your mercy we thank you, Lord, for the blood that was shed for our sins. Thankful, Lord, for the forgiveness of sins. God, I pray, Lord, uh, this evening, God, that you could just speak to our hearts. I pray, God, that you would, uh, Lord, just let us be attentive unto your word. God, I pray, Lord, any distraction, Lord, that would be round about us, God, that you could uh, take those things away from us, uh, from our hearts and minds and ears. And, God, that we might just fully concentrate on you. We thank you, God, for... Uh, your presence, Lord, uh, through your word. And God, thankful, Lord, how you speak to us through it. God, we want to be mindful, Lord, of these, Lord, that are mentioned, Lord, just about every service and those mentioned here this past Sunday. Lord, you know each and every one and each and every need, Lord, especially those that need uh, physical touches. God, that you, uh, Lord, knowing that you're the great physician, God, you can uh, heal any manner of disease. Lord, you can uh, heal any problem, Lord, that we have in these physical bodies. Lord, you made these bodies, and Lord, you can heal them. And Lord, we're thankful, God, for that. And Lord, I just want to pray for them, Lord, that you would just give them that, that they need to go from day to day. And God, we want to pray, Lord, for those especially, Lord, that need spiritual help. And God, now we look all around about us, God, and see, Lord, the spiritual need, Lord, that we have, uh, Lord, in our communities, and God, uh, Lord, in our, our country. Lord, and, and, and just, Lord, just round about us everywhere we go, our workplaces, God, we just see a spiritual need, Lord, and Lord, we need a spiritual awakening, and God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us, God, to be a witness and a light, Lord, to a lost and dying world, God, help us, Lord, to be mindful, Lord, of you and everything, and Lord, help us be mindful, uh, Lord, and live a life, Lord, that would be pleasing in your sight, and Lord, that might be a light to a lost and dying world, God, we ask, Lord, that you would go with us, you would lead us, guide us, and direct us. God, be with our church and help it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, as we look here in the book of Ephesians, is where we want to begin reading tonight, the book of Ephesians, in chapter number four. 
Uh, we want to just, uh, like I said, we're going to be reading all of chapter number four. Uh, we're going to be reading all of chapter number five and then down into chapter number six. And uh, we, we dealt Sunday and we went through the five different uh, steps that we talked about. We talked about God's five step program uh, for Christian living. And we talked about in chapter number four, how he says to start off by walking worthy of the vocation wherewith you're called. And then uh, he says in verse number 17, to walk not as other Gentiles walk. Uh, he says in chapter number five and verse number two, to walk in love. Uh, in chapter number five, verse number eight, he says to walk as children of light. And then in chapter number five and verse number 15, he says that you walk uh, circumspectly. And uh, we talked about those things just kind of in general. And it uh, seems like uh, we didn't get hardly anywhere where we thought that we would get, but we know that uh, it was the Lord's will and that's fine. And sometimes we just need to uh, slow down and, uh, and I guess set the plow a little bit deeper and uh, get a deeper meaning of it. But all of these steps that he uh, talks about here, uh, I want us to notice that in between those different ones where they're highlighted, those five steps that we highlighted, there's a lot of verses in between that go on and explain what he's talking about, about that particular step, about how, uh, and that particular walk and, and, and how to live life that way and, and how to do it. And, um, you know, we, we, we talked, um, uh, a, a lot there. Uh, it seemed like we got uh, kind of dug in on the walk circumspectly. Uh, the word circumspectly meaning to walk cautiously. Uh, it means to walk not carelessly. And it means to walk with steady application. That's what it means. It means a diligent walk uh, with the Lord. And so uh, it seems like we dug into that um, a pretty good uh, bit there. But I want you to notice in your Bibles, just, just looking in your Bibles, this will be more Bible study than it will be preaching tonight. But uh, I want you to notice that in chapter number five and verse number 15, uh, he gives that walk of walking circumspectly. And I want you to notice this, it doesn't end, you know, a lot of times your, your Bible will have breaks and different headings uh, of course, uh, different chapter numbers create breaks and all those things in it. But as I read it, I want you to notice this. Um, uh, after he talks about working, uh, walking circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, and redeeming the time because the days are evil, and, and, and goes on down through there, I believe he continues that thought, not just down through, like my, my Bible has a break between verses 21 and verses 22, almost like, you know, changing thought or changing direction. But I believe that walking cautiously and, and that walking not steadily goes on down through where he talks about wives and he talks about husbands and he talks about uh, children. He talks about service and then he also, servants, and then he also talks about soldier. Uh, on down in chapter number six. I believe that that carries uh, on down through there and on down through those verses. But uh, uh, just looking at this, I want to read uh, all of these verses. I want you to be patient with me in the reading. I'm not the best reader in the world. I want you to read along with me. Um, but I want to read slow. Um, we want to read it together. And I want to say just a few things that the Lord laid up out on my heart about. Uh, we talked about the breakdown of the book, the first three chapters dealing with our wealth in Christ. Uh, chapters number four and five and the first part of chapter number six dealing with our walk in Christ. And then the latter part of chapter number six dealing with our warfare uh, in Christ. And so uh, I really want to deal with our walk in Christ Jesus. Amen. And uh, I want to read these verses that deal with those things and uh, take the time to just read God's word and see how it says how we should walk. I, I mentioned this Sunday and uh, I'll say it again. A lot of times, a lot of people like to hear about our wealth in Christ, but they don't so much like to hear about how uh, we should walk in Christ in our new walk as a, as a new man of putting off the old man 
and, uh, and, and getting into the new walk, a new life with Christ. And a lot of times people don't want to hear how they should walk or where they should walk or when they should walk or who they should walk with. Uh, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll say this again, it's not my opinions, it's God's word. And we need it in today's time. We need it as Christian people. And in order to grow, in order to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we need to know how to walk. And so let's read the verses here uh, this evening. In chapter number four and verse number one, the Bible says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called with all lowliness and meekness and with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Let me add this in there and, and, and thinking, about, um, uh, uh, thinking about all those ones that he meant. There's one Lord and, and there's one faith and there's one baptism, there's one spirit, there's one God and there's one Father. And I, I, I read all those verses and I'm, I'm not trying to add anything to it, but wouldn't you, wouldn't you think that there would be one word also? Not, not many different words, but one word. Just something to think about. If there's one Lord and one faith and one baptism, one God, and one spirit, and one body, and one hope, you'd think there'd be one word, don't you? But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he laid captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might feel all things. He gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers <clears throat> for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now let me stop right there and just, just give you a little something. He talks about he gives some apostles and he gives some prophets and some evangelists some pastors and teachers. And notice in verse number 12, why? You know, why did he give prophets of old? Why, why did he give apostles? And, and why did he give evangelists? And why does he give in today's time pastors and teachers? Well, the reason is this, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplied, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part maketh increase of the body and to the edifying of itself in love. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, 
who being past feeling have given themselves over into lasciviousness to walk, excuse me, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Now I like that phrase. The truth is is in Jesus, Christ alone. That you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is the corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man, which after God has created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Now let me say something there before we jump into chapter number five is that you'll notice all those verses there in the latter part deal with uh, walk not as other Gentiles walk. Ye that are alive in Christ now, ye that have been saved and, and been born again, we're not to grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, we're not to be liars and, and we're not to be uh, speaking untruths. We're not to be angry and uh, we're not to, uh, it says in verse number 31 and, and on down through there, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. If he's talking about not walking as other Gentiles walk, he, he's saying that this is, this is not the life of the Christian. This is, this is you're, you're no longer the old man. You're, you're a new creation. You are a new creature in Christ. And so what he's saying here, all these verses pertain to that second step in our walk with Christ of not walking as other Gentiles walk. Chapter number five. Be therefore followers of God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also had loved us and have given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become as saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking or jesting, which are not convenient. And that word convenient there gives the meaning of they're not fitting. You know, he talking about the fornication, uncleanness and covetousness and the filthiness and the foolish talking and the jesting they're not convenient. They're not fitting. Means that if you're a new creature in Christ Jesus, it doesn't, it doesn't fit the mold, I guess what you'd say. It's, it's not, they're not convenient. They're, they're, they're not fitting of the new life in Christ. But rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no whoremonger or nor unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. 
Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness. That's what we were. You were sometimes darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Those things that we once did love to do apart from Christ before we were saved, it says, but all things that are reproved uh, or it says there, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Those things that we once loved to do, we should now hate to do, amen? It shouldn't be that we still love to do those things that we loved to do before we got saved, before we got right with God. But those things that we used to do, we hate them now. We hate them with a perfect hatred. And it says, rather reprove them to speak evil of those former things. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done on them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead. And Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, <coughs> but be filled with the Spirit speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and to the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot nor wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man yet ever, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church, for we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall man leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. I love that verse. It's the right thing to do. Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother. That word honor there gives a meaning of to prize, to put a great value on. It says to honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, now that thou mayest live long on the earth. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Servants, be obedient unto them that are your masters, according to the flesh, and with fear and trembling, 
in singleness of your heart as unto Christ, not with eye service as men pleasers, but as the servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will, doing service as to the Lord, not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. And ye masters do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also is in heaven. Neither is there respect of persons with him. I want to end my reading there tonight with that. And I know that's a lot of reading. I know that's um, a lot said in those verses. I'm going to give you just a very few things that I see about this in particular, uh, as he's talking about our walk in Christ. I see a few things that are addressed through all these verses, and we don't have time to go back and go verse by verse, unless you want me to. If you want me to go verse by verse exposition, we'll do that, and it'll take a really long time. But a few things just to highlight that I see as he talks about our walk in Christ. I see some particular things that are addressed in all these verses that he talks about our new walk. I believe in these verses you'll see that he addresses what the heart of man should be like. The Bible tells us out of, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And over and over he talks about our conversation. I know that's not just talking about our words, but he talks about uh, uh, put away lying. And, and he talks about those, those, uh, those things that we used to talk about and the things that we used to say and, 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 and the, the things that used to abound in our heart. I believe that as he talks about our new walk in Christ, he addresses the issues that we have in the heart. I believe also he gives us and addresses the issues that we find in our heads and in our minds. Chapter number four and verse number 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And so we understand here that in our new walk, he addresses uh, how our hearts should be. In our new walk, he also addresses how our minds and our, our, our current mindset should be. And we understand that the, the battlefield uh, that our minds have, and, and, but with the, the walking in Christ and, and then in, the, in the new walk, we see uh, he addresses uh, of being renewed in the spirit of our minds. And so he talks about our minds. We also see in talking about our new walk uh, in Christ and talking about our, our daily walk in Christ. He also addresses the things that we should see and things, the way things should be in our homes. He gives the establishment and he gives uh, how a husband should treat his wife. He gives how a wife should treat her husband. And he also gives how children should treat their parents. And so he addresses in our, in, in our walk in Christ, I'm, I thank God for it. Listen, he gives us the makeup of what the home should be. The husband should be under Christ and the wife should be under husband and, and reverencing her husband. And, and then the children should be in subjection to mother and father. And we see there that a great deal is placed, a great deal of responsibility is placed not necessarily just on the wife. Now, a lot of times folks grab those things and they see those and talking about submitting and referencing and all these things. And people label Paul even as a woman hater and, and things of that nature. But that's, that's not what it is. Uh, the greatest responsibility is of the husband in loving his wife and loving his children as Christ loved the church. And so we're thankful that he addresses in our new wall, he addresses what our home should be like. All, obviously through this and talking about the body of Christ, the universal body of Christ, 
he addresses the thing, and this being a letter to the church of Ephesus, uh, he addresses the things of how things should be in the church also. Our new walk in Christ. Listen, church shouldn't be a place of fighting, and it shouldn't be a place of fussing, it shouldn't be a place of bitterness, it shouldn't be a place of malice, and it shouldn't be a place of clamor and evil speaking, and all these different things listed down through there. Our day-to-day -day lives and day-to-day -day actions and and all these different things, but this is a church written, uh, a letter written to the church, and it addresses how we should walk as being part of a local assembly and being part of the universal body of Christ. And so we see here that he also addresses not only our homes and the house of God, but throughout all this, he is addressing, I, I believe this. I believe that if we could walk as he tells us to walk, if we, if our hearts are in a condition, in a fashion, we have a heart after God and our minds and our heads are, are clear from all the filthiness and all the, uh, 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 all the, all the, 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 the sinful things of this life. And, and if our homes are right and all, and the, and if our, our churches are right, and all these different things, what he gives us is what you say, I hate to say a recipe, but he gives us a, an image of what holiness is. Holiness is not. Now I'll go back to the, the first verses there where he talks about walking worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. I want you to verse, notice verse number two, with all lowliness and meekness and with long suffering for bearing one another in love. Holiness is not a thing of me being holier than thou, but holiness is just simply this. It is a life that is dedicated. It is a life that is uh, set aside. It is, a, it, is, it is a life lived after God. It is a heart set on the things of God, and it is a life that is lived in the accordance of how God would have us to live that life. I see in these things about, I, I want to just say a few things about the, the, the walk in Christ here that we see and just kind of summarize all these walks together. First of all, I want to say this about our walk in Christ. I'll say this first of all. It is a difficult walk. If you're, if you're writing things down, I want you to write these things down. I believe it'll be a help to you. I want to start off by saying this. It's a difficult walk. Nobody ever said that it was going to be easy to live like Christ wanted us to, uh, wants us to live. And especially, let me say this, especially is a difficult walk if we're trying to walk it and do it for ourselves, by ourselves, and through ourselves. What I'm saying is this, it's gonna be hard living if you're trying to live this life just in pleasing other people. If you're trying to live a holy life just to please mama and daddy. If you're trying to live a holy life just to please the, the people in the church and, and different things like that. It's going to be a difficult walk for you if you are trying to live it and do it in and through and by yourself. It is a difficult walk. And that is why we need, as we read in, in last week in, in verse number 8, 5 and 18, talking about being filled with the Spirit. We talked about that battle of the flesh and the Spirit. And we need to be filled with the Spirit because the Spirit, uh, honestly, the Spirit fights those battles for us. And so I'll say this. I'm not standing up here tonight and saying it's easy peasy and it's peaches and cream. It's a difficult walk. In the, in the world that we're living in today, it's, it is hard to be angry and sin not, is it not? Uh, it's hard not to get bitter. It is, it is a difficult thing not to get angry. 
It is a difficult thing when he talks about in verse number 32 and verse number 4 in forgiving one another. That's, that, that is what we should do. But I'll be honest with you. Sometimes that's a difficult thing to do in ourselves. But I've noticed this even in my own life when God gets a hold of our heart and God has leadership in our life, then those things that, we, uh, that come easy to us we're able to let go of. So I'll say first of all about the, the walk, our walk in Christ. I'm going to start first of all by saying it's a difficult walk. And it's a walk you can't walk by yourself. It is a walk that nobody else can walk for you. Amen? Uh, somebody else can't do it for you. But it is a walk that you must through the leadership of the Lord, you must have his help in order to live a life in being pleasing to him. It's a difficult walk. Secondly, let me say this, it's a daily walk. These walks that were, these five steps and these five walks that are addressed here, these verses that are read here, is not something that we just put on on Sunday and put on on Wednesday. And, uh, and you know, Sunday's for the Lord and we can do what we want Monday and Tuesday. And Wednesday's for the Lord and we can do what we want Thursday and act how we want and walk the way we want all those other days. And, and then, uh, you know, it's, it's, not a, it's not a country song walk. You know, all, a lot of country songs talk about, you know, getting drunk on, on, on through the week and then making it to the church bell uh, by Sunday. That's, that's, that's not... This walk in Christ, it's a daily walk. Remember me, uh, last Wednesday, when we were talking about the, the battle between flesh and spirit, I, I made this statement, it's a daily walk, or a daily battle, excuse me. And I thank God for this. Thank God that knowing that the battle between flesh and spirit is a day in and day out battle, but thank God that we can have a day in and day out walk with the Lord. Amen? It's a daily walk. These things that we're reading here is not something that we put on when it's convenient and then put off and act the way we want to, but these things that are set before us are 24 hours a day, every day of the week, a new walk for the believer in Christ, these are the things that we should heed to, not just in church, but in our workplaces, in our homes, and in our daily goings. When we go to this place and that place and in and out, we're amongst people and all these different things, this should be our walk. So it's a daily walk. Thirdly, let me say this, it's a different walk. And thank God it is a different walk. It's not... He gives. He gives the. He gives. Um, he, he gives all these. All these things here, uh, especially uh, through the walking, not as other Gentiles walk. Um, and he talks about um, in verse number twenty-two that ye have put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Be renewed by the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So I'll say this, the walk in Christ should be, and it is a different walk than it was before you come to know Christ. And listen, maybe you're saved at a, a young age, and I know you didn't, you know, you wasn't saved off of a bar stool or anything like that. But I tell you this, I still believe and I still preach in a changing salvation. I believe the Lord can change an eight-year-old's heart. I believe he can change a 30-year-old's heart. I believe he can change an 80-year-old's heart. And, and it's, it is a different walk. You notice in the Bible, you ever, you ever notice, there, there's one person that I can think of, but you ever notice that anybody that truly gets saved and gets born again, it completely changes them. 
when people come in contact with Christ. You think about uh, the maniac of Gadara. You think about Zacchaeus. You think about blind Bartimaeus. Uh, you think about the repentant thief on the cross. All, uh, you see what I'm saying? Is it wasn't just those guys were just super special, but all they simply did was just get saved and born again. And their new walk in Christ began immediately. And so we see here that, and their new walk in Christ was completely different than what it was before they met Christ. And so should our walks be daily. Each and every day, it should be a different, we should not look like the world. Yes, you say, preacher, we are, we are in the world. We are in the world, but we're not to be of the world. And thank God what we have inside of our heart did not come by the world, by the world, but it come through the Lord Jesus Christ. What we have inside of our heart did not come from man, but it come from the man, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I thank God for that. I thank God that the new walk in Christ, it is a different walk. That's why the Bible says that we're a peculiar people. That's why it says here in talking about the, walk, uh, the, the walks, it talks about walking as children of light, not walking as, as one that is in darkness. He said, you were sometimes in, at one times you were darkness. You were darkness. But now you're a light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So it's a, it's a different walk. Now we are walking in the light. See, those things that we used to do that, used to not bother us. The filthy talking and the jesting and the, 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 the filthiness of, of our past sinful life. Oh, it's completely different now. And we thank God for that. And those things that we once took pleasure in, we no longer take pleasure in knowing, knowing now that light has been shed in our heart, we can know that when we were lost, we had no idea. Lost people do lost things because they're lost and in the darkness. What can you expect them to do? Act like a Christian, be like a Christian, and walk like a Christian? No, they're lost. That's their problem. And thank God when you become a new creature in and through and by Jesus Christ, when you become a new creature, that walk is completely different after one gets saved. So it is a different walk. Let me say this fourthly is a defining walk. These walks is a defining walk. It will define who you are to everybody else around you. You can talk a good game. You can say all the right words. But I'll, I'll, I'll say this, everybody sees your daily walk. Everybody that you know, they see your walk. They see how you act. They see how you dress. They see how you carry yourself. They see your attitude. They see your heart. They see the actions that you, your, your daily actions. Is this not what this new walk is, is our daily actions? And this, what, this new walk in Christ, it, is, it will define you. You won't have to hold a sign that says, I'm a Christian to everybody. Hold up a sign that says, I'm a Christian. But it will define you to a lost and dying world that there's something different about you. That there's a love that's been shed in your heart. That there's a, a kindness that's been shed in your heart. That's that you're not. Listen, you, you think about that verse that talked about, um, you know, those that you used to run with, they think it's strange that you no longer do those things with them. I, I know I'm, I'm butchering that and I'm not quoting that exactly, but you know what I'm talking about? It says they, they think it's strange that you run not with them. The reason they think it's strange that you run not with them is because they notice there's something different about you. In our new walk in Christ, if we are walking daily in Christ Jesus our Lord, walking as he'd have us to walk, you won't have to tell everybody. They'll be able to see it. 
It's a defining walk. Now let me say this lastly, and I'll close with this. These walks that we see, it is a delightful walk. Now I started by saying it's a difficult walk, and it is a difficult walk. And you say, preacher, you, well, you said it was difficult, and now you're saying it's delightful. Well, I, I, I say this, it is a difficult walk in and by yourself. But thank God we don't have to walk this new walk in and by ourselves. Thank God we have the Holy Spirit of God. Thank God we have the Holy Scriptures of God. Amen. And so we realize that it is a delightful walk in the fact of the presence of the Lord is with us wherever we go. I look up the word delightful and the word delight gives the meaning of this. It, it, it said this, it, it means a highly pleasing. And the word delight, it says, is a more permanent pleasure than joy. Delight. Delight is a more permanent pleasure than joy. And it is not dependent upon sudden excitement. Yeah, there's going to be hard times in your Christian walk. There's going to be difficult times in your Christian walk. But let me say this, I wouldn't trade it for a million dollars. Walking with the Lord in, 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 in times of drawing near and walking in accordance to the way that God through his word has told us to walk, I wouldn't give you anything for the feeling of that. Now I'll say this, I know what it's like to be out of God's will. Now, that's not delightful. And if you've ever been out of the will of God, even being saved, you know what I'm talking about. It's not delightful. Oh, but there's just something about when, when we get lined up with him, when we get lined up with him and knowing that his presence and his peace, we know that he is fighting every battle that we are going to face day to day. Knowing that, as the song says, I have somebody with me to share the heavy load. Even though the load is heavy, let me say this, it's delightful. I said, uh, I said maybe Sunday, it's a rough road, but it's the right road. And thank God, it's the, you can have delight, you can have joy. You can have joy and delight in your Christian walk. You don't have to walk around with your head hung down saying, oh, this is just... This is just a drudgery. That's why, that's why I was saying in the beginning, when we try to do it in of ourselves, we feel that way, isn't it? We feel that it's just a bunch of, when we're trying to do it ourselves, we feel like it's just a, a bunch of rules that we have to keep. But there's just something about being, you know, when you're filled with the Spirit of God and you're, you're lined up with, in the will of God and... There's just something about that feeling that is just, well, I guess, as the song says, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. I don't even have the words to say, but you know what? You know what I mean. There's just something about the fact that we have a daily walk, our, our new walk in Christ. Sometimes we were, at one time, we were in darkness. No Christ leading us, no Christ in the, the, our presence, in our, in our inner man, no, no Christ fighting our battles. But now our new walk in Christ, one of the great benefits of being saved, our new walk in Christ, we can have delight in it. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Lord willing, we'll be in the book of Ephesians on Sunday. I'll say this, please take time. I hope this has helped you. I hope you. I hope this has helped you in seeing that this walk in Christ is not just a bunch of rules and regulations, but it's something that we ought to strive for as Christian people, just to get lined up with Him and to change us. Listen, His Word doesn't change, so there's no point in us trying to change His Word. Best thing we can do is just get lined up with it. Amen. So, Lord willing, I want I want you to take time this week. Stay in the book of Ephesians, read in the book of Ephesians and your daily reading, and I promise God will help you, okay? Hope you have a good night. God bless you.